Hi folks, this is Professor Mughal here. It's been a few weeks, I haven't been able to interact with you uh, in my recent videos. So I just wanted to thank everyone for liking and subscribing to the channel. The response has been amazing and I'm really overwhelmed. I wish I have more time so I can make more videos. So in this tutorial, we are actually gonna make a, a, a two-way traffic light signal using Arduino uh, Mini Pro. So uh, this is a great tutorial for someone who is trying to familiarize himself with the Arduino uh, Mini Pro. Uh, and you're not just gonna learn about the Arduino Mini Pro, but also you're gonna learn how to program it using the TFDI. Uh, and then uh, learn some prototyping skills, you know, we gonna 3D print a, a casing for it. And then explore, you know, how we can fit all the components in there and then make it a final finished product. So let's get rolling. And the first thing which we normally do is to come up with a schematic. So let's make a circuit design first. So let's get on to fritzing. Arduino Pro Mini uses the 8 mega surface mount chip and because it uses the same processor used in Arduino Uno, Pro Mini has similar features to that of Arduino Uno. It has two additional analog inputs because it uses the surface mount version of the chip. One difference between the Uno and Pro Mini is it has no USB port and in order to program the Pro Mini board, you will need an FTDI adapter. Arduino Pro Mini has 13 digital I.O. pins, 8 analog input pins. On the side of the Pro Mini is the connector to FTDI interface. And this particular Pro Mini can be powered by either 3.3 or 5 volt by changing the header pins. Finally, you have ground, reset, and serial and digital I.O. pins. FTDI adapter has several output pins. However, they will be a set dedicated to programming the Pro Mini board. See the graphics on how to make connections to program the Pro Mini.
keep in mind, if you are using Windows, you might have to install an additional USB driver for your FTDI adapter. For using Linux and Mac, that should not be a problem. Now that you have that set it up, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is go into tools and select the correct board type and processor. I am using Arduino Pro Mini that has Atmega 328 5V 16MHz chip. This is important to do otherwise your timing loops may be off. Finally select the right board. The Arduino code is very short and easy to understand. I'm using two variables here, but they still have meaningful names. The first one is for switching delay. That's a two second delay for the light transitions. The next variable may seem a little strange to those who have not seen a two dimensional array before. Think of it like a spreadsheet where you have rows and columns. The variable is defined as switching mode, which means we have two rows and 30 columns. That's what the 2 and 30 represents in those square brackets. If you have more columns listed in your code than you have defined, you will get a compiler error. Now, creating a two-dimensional array to hold the pin numbers and their associated state. The first row holds the Arduino pin numbers and the sequence of the traffic lights that we want. The second row is for the state of that pin during the sequence, which means 0 is going to be off and 1 is going to be on. The negative one in this array is used to denote a pause in the sequence. In the setup routine, we then tell the compiler what we are doing with which pin. In this case, we are setting all the Arduino pins that we require to output. But this time, we are using a loop to achieve this. That is the reason we use consecutive numbers for the Arduino pins. While we are in the loop, we also set all LEDs to off. And that is pretty much the end of the setup and now we move to the loop routine which will keep running until we remove the power. One of the reasons this code is extremely short and easy to understand is because the sequence is all wrapped up in our two-dimensional array. What we do here is loop through all 30 elements of the row. Uh, switching mode 0 gives us the Arduino pin number that has an LED on it and switching mode 1 gives us the state for that pin in our sequence.
well that's it folks uh, that's it from this video I hope you enjoyed it uh, remember I really want you to understand one thing you know uh, I know that most of you are students and you may not have all the components that you need in order to complete these projects so say you might not have a 3d printer but you do have cardboard boxes that you can get for almost nothing right so I really want you to innovate and uh, uh, although you would want to replicate something similar to this but not having components or other things should not stop you from making something like this you have to find a way to get around and make something work out for you um, and that is something I really want you to learn and implement and if you really come up with something which you know you think it's amazing please send it to me and I'll share it on my channel and share with everyone you know uh, enjoy your rest of the day uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not already I'll see you later bye